Okay. I like to say that I'm surprised that things are going weird, but I'm not. <laughs> it's uh, one of the unfortunate things about trying to teach both to a group in front of you and people remote that there's going to be some technology things that have to be figured out as we go. <laughs> um, so welcome to differential equations. And uh, there are a number of things about this course that are even more challenging than other math classes. Uh, technology issues, that's going to be one of them. <laughs> but even despite that, the way differential equations works, it's, well, I'll just say it's weird, OK? Let's start by just what the heck is a differential equation? It always kind of surprises me that the way our educational system is set up, for the most part, people take courses because they're on a list of courses they have to take, and they have no idea what those courses are about until they get into them. <laughs> and to some extent, I understand it. I mean, you don't know what a differential equation is until you've had some one try to explain it to you. But I do wish that you would have some idea before you got in there what it was you were in for. So, The first question of the day then is, well, what is a differential equation? Well, to start off with, you may have seen some differential equations in your calc courses. So you may have some idea, you may have solved some separable differential equations or something along the way. But those kind of simple examples that you did, they're trying to be an introduction, but they're not a very good introduction. Because they kind of skip the whole point of what a differential equation is. The thing is, is that really, differential equations are a natural next step from what you've done so far. To explain that, let's kind of do a little piecemeal version of what has your math education been so far? Well, when you were really young, you learned arithmetic. And what the heck is arithmetic? OK, yeah, you're adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. All those things are operations on numbers. We can even include some other things which would be more advanced arithmetic, like exponentiation and square roots and things like that. You're taking numbers, you're doing something to them, you're getting another number. Then you get to middle school, high school, and you start learning algebra.
Now, algebra is a huge, wide field. There's all sorts of things to it. But the defining characteristic, the thing that kind of gets added in with algebra is the idea of a variable. That you have a letter, some kind of a symbol, that represents an unknown number. And while there's all sorts of things that you do in algebra, one of the primary things is that you're solving for that variable. You're trying to figure out what number does this variable represent. Now, from there, you probably took a couple of other courses like trigonometry and geometry somewhere in there. And while those are certainly important courses, I'm going to ignore those for the moment. And I'm going to skip ahead to, after doing arithmetic and algebra, that the next thing I want to focus on is the idea of calculus. And of course, calculus is a wide topic again. But the two major parts of calculus are taking derivatives and finding integrals. And there's all sorts of applications and other side things in there. But it kind of all comes back to those two core things, derivatives and integrals. And what's going on with those? Well, a derivative you take the derivative of a function. You integrate a function. You're doing things to functions, obviously not exactly the same way, but just how arithmetic was operations on numbers, calculus is kind of a type of an operation on a function. So as I started this, I said that if you look at it the right way, differential equations should be an obvious next step. If arithmetic was operations on numbers, then algebra was solving for an unknown number. In calculus, we started doing operations on functions. What's the next logical step? Solving for an unknown function. There's just like all these other things have sides and other things, there's definitely more to differential equations than just that. But that is the key focus of what a differential equation is. You have some equation that involves a function that you don't know what it is. And you're trying to figure out what is that function based on the equation. Okay, that being said, this is just like algebra was kind of a big jump from what you did. Calculus was a big jump from what you had done previously. Differential equations is another big jump. It's gonna use 
al arithmetic, algebra, and calculus. Absolutely, all those things are going to come up in here, but we're going to have to look at things in a very different way because we're doing something new. We're doing something that you haven't seen before. So it's going to be, well, it's going to take a little bit of time to readjust the way you think to solve these things. Which comes to the course a little bit here. Now, honestly, because of the remote thing and having to lecture this way, I'm not going to take a lot of class time to go over the paperwork kind of stuff. I assume that you can pull up the syllabus and read it and figure things out from there. However, there is one thing that I want to take a look at real quick, and that is the schedule for the course. Give me a little bit of a moment. Okay, uh, so those of you can, in front of me can ignore the screen. <laughs> this is, focus on this one over here. And so, Muhammad, you should be able to see it I sh on, you, you should be seeing the schedule, correct? Okay. Okay, so out of everything in the Moodle shell, this is 100% the most important thing. So this is the entire course in a nutshell. It has all of your homework assignments, the holidays, the exam days, everything there. Now, so the way this is set up is that for each day, after the lecture on that day, the problems listed are the ones you should be able to do after having seen that lecture. So after today, you should be able to do the problems from section 1.1. After Wednesday's lecture, you should be able to do the problems from section 2.2 and so on. Now, that's easy. But if you take even a brief look at what's going on here, there's a lot of weird stuff. <laughs> First thing is, is that I don't collect homework until uh, September 20th. All of the homework is due the day of the first test. So why do I do this? Well, as I said, it takes some getting used to differential equations. Again, it takes a different shift in mindset. It's, there's stuff that's gonna take you a little while to hash through. And it's kind of, I won't say unfair, but for some students, it doesn't work to collect homework every week because they need a little bit more time to process it. And so in order to try and give those students time to figure stuff out, it kind of makes sense to give you as much time as possible to do everything. Now, that being said, that can lead to the other side of things where 
you say, oh, well, wait a minute, this isn't due for a month. I don't need to worry about this. And that's a huge trap that you don't want to fall into, even though it's not due until September 20th, you, you want to be doing it as if it were week by week. You want to be tr trying everything you can to stay on top of this, because I can tell you, if you start falling behind, it gets worse and worse and worse. Hopefully, like I said, if you do, you know, there, there is going to be one of those turning points where all of a sudden things start to make sense and you can get caught up. But if that happens, again, you want it to be on your terms, not homework's terms, <laughs> if that makes sense. You want it to be that it, basically if you're struggling with it, there's the flexibility to try and figure it out, take a little bit more time. But if you are understanding it, you don't want this stuff to pile up. Okay, that's one weird thing. It's just the fact that there are only three times during the semester when I'm collecting homework. The other weird thing is if you actually look at the sections, there is a lot and I mean a lot of jumping around the book. We start today, we're doing section 1.1, then we skip up to 2.2, spend some time in chapter two, go into chapter three. Oh, and then we come back to chapter one. And then we go ahead and then we jump up to chapter four and then uh, it's closer to linear from there on, but even then there's still some jumping around. It's tough to explain exactly why we're doing all that jumping around. But to try and make it as simple as possible, it's because, well, differential equations is complicated. <laughs> and the thing is, is that the person who wrote the differential equations book is trying to do it and lay it out in a way that makes sense to someone who knows differential equations already. <laughs> it does not make sense to someone who's learning it for the first time. In particular, just to start with what we're doing right now, the reason that I jump forward and do chapter two before going through the rest of chapter one is because chapter one is entirely theory he goes through and talks about, well, under these conditions, a differential equation has a solution. And da, da, da. it's like, if you don't know what a differential equation is, all that stuff you're talk he's talking about goes completely over your head. So for various reasons, it just kind of makes sense to try and get some of the basic terminology down. That's what we're doing today and then skip forward, start saying, hey, here's some techniques, some basic ways that we can solve some simple differential equations. Then once you understand some of that, once you understand a little bit more about how differential equations work, then we can come back and get some of the technical theory stuff done. Okay. Any questions on the schedule then? Absolutely, yeah. So the question was, it's not due until September 20th, but if you do want to do it on a weekly basis, turn it in early, can you do that? Absolutely. <laughs> um, in particular for Muhammad, I highly recommend you do that because the assignments here can be like 80 pages thick sometimes, and you do not want to be scanning all that and uploading it in one night. <laughs> okay. Are those the whole work assignment or the whole work assignment? 
that is the homework assignment right there. So that's, we should be able to do those at the end of the day. That's what our homework assignment is. Correct. Okay. Yes. After today, you should be able to do those problems from section 1.1. Now, if you look at that, that may seem like a lot, but many of those problems from today are just understanding some terminology. And once you understand the definitions, many of the problems, not all of them, but many of the problems can be done in just a couple of seconds. <laughs> Whereas you start getting into more complicated ones, in general, there are fewer problems, the more work you've got to do. Okay, before I even get into all that terminology stuff, let's actually take a look at what does a differential equation look like? So the very name gives us a hint about what a differential equation is. So the fact that it's an equation, I mean, we have to have an equal sign. We have to be talking that two things are mean the same thing. And differential ties into derivatives. The basic idea of what a differential equation is, it's an equation that relates in some way, equates functions and derivatives. So a very, very simple one would be something like y prime equals y. So first thing to realize here is that, yeah, sometimes in algebra, when you've got a system of equations, you'll use x and y as just different number variables. In differential equations, typically when we have y, y isn't just a number, y is a function. And unless otherwise specified, and definitely there will be times when we do specify otherwise, but unless otherwise specified, our independent variable is usually going to be x. So we'll say that y is some function with a variable of x. Now, obviously the first day of class, we're not gonna be talking about all the different methods of solving differential equations that we're gonna be going through throughout the semester. But looking at that, can you figure out what is a function, just based on what you know of calculus, what is a function where y prime equals y? E to the x. Congratulations, you just solved your first differential equation. <laughs> but then there's always a question that comes up in math, really at all levels, but we start stressing it more and more the further you go, is okay, y equals e to the x is a solution. Is it the only solution? Or could there be others? I'll go ahead and say there are others. <laughs> Can anyone come up with one? A negative EDX negative e does work. Okay. Any others? Yeah. 
Okay. Think about what Noah just said and what he did as an example of something that you could generalize. Putting a negative in front of it is a specific example of doing something to the function. Okay, it is an operation on the function, but I need to be a little more specific than that. It's not an inverse function. Going ahead and going back to the word operation, putting a negative in front of it is the same as doing what? What operation to that function? Multiplying by negative one. Could you generalize that? Oh, you're so close, come on. You could multiply by any number and you could get it. So I could have three e to the x or negative 17 e to the x or any number times e to the x and it would be a solution to this. So what we'll typically do, just like in calculus, you will often have, uh, you've got something like you take an antiderivative and you put in a plus C and you recognize that that plus C could be any constant. We do similar things here. This is a solution. And let me go ahead and stop there. We are going to use any number of abbreviations for things. And one of the biggest ones that we're gonna use over and over and over again is there is no way I am writing out differential equation every single time I say that. So DE typically in caps is what we'll often say when it's obvious we're talking about a differential equation. So why is e to the x is a particular solution to that differential equation? And we'll say something like y is a constant e to the x is the family of solutions to the differential equations. If we want to be even a little bit more specific, we can say that this is a one parameter family of solutions to that differential equation. This C can be anything, that's the parameter. We've got one thing that can be any real number. So it's a one parameter family of equations. Okay, let's go ahead and still just going by what we know, not trying to do any techniques for solving these things yet, just kind of thinking through what works. Let's make that one just a little bit harder. What if instead of y prime equals y, what if we had y prime equals 3y? Or in other words, taking the derivative is the same as multiplying the function by 3. A 
a little bit harder. But think about the example we just did. And that's actually, there's a big, big hint in there. Perfect, yeah. Because remember that to take the derivative of e to the 3x, you'd have to use the chain rule. To take the derivative of e to a power, it's still e to the power, still e to the 3x. But then the chain rule says you've got to multiply by the derivative of that power. Multi derivative of 3x will give you that 3. OK, and once again, that is a particular solution to that. Can you take that particular solution and how do you think you would modify it to get a family of solutions to it? OK. Um, tell me exactly what you want. OK. So let's think about that. If I take the derivative here, so same thing I was saying for this one, the derivative of e to a power is e to that same power, but then we'd have to multiply by the derivative of that. Derivative of a constant times x would be a constant. The only way that's going to work, the only way that this is going to be 3 times this, is if that c is a 3. So I can't mess with that c. That's, that constant has to be a 3. But you are right as far as that there is going to be a generic constant in there. It's a matter of finding where's the right place to put that constant. E over C. Keep saying E over C to the three X like that, or okay. Again, don't overthink it too much. That's it. Yeah. Same kind of thing to take the derivative here. Well, first of all, when you got a constant times a function and you take the derivative, you can kind of ignore the constant. The derivative e to the 3x is e to the 3x times 3. So our derivative is 3 times y. OK, just going to do one more example here before we get into some definition stuff. First off, let me just say that in general, going to a second derivative makes things way, way more complicated than only having a first derivative in the equation. But again, I'm trying to stick to simple basic functions 
that you should be able to think about in terms of what you know how to take derivatives of where you can figure this thing out. So can you think of a function that when you take the second derivative, you end up with the opposite sign of what you started with? Caleb? Sine and cosine. Sine and cosine. Now, right away, the fact that you had two different things there makes this a lot more complicated in terms of what's going on. In the end, both the other examples that we did, once we had one solution, we just said, oh, OK, all the other solutions are just constant multiples of that. But while there's a lot of ties between sine and cosine, they're definitely not just multiples of each other. We actually have two different kinds of solutions here. Now, each one of those things separately, we could multiply by a constant and they would still be solutions. I could take a constant times the sine of x, five sine x or negative three sine x, and those would also be solutions to the differential equation. I could take 14 cosine x or two thirds cosine x, and those would be solutions. In fact, if we kind of try and put everything together, we would get anything like that would be a solution. Not only can I have the two parts individually, but if I add them together, I still get a solution. So this would be a two parameter family of solutions. There's more than one thing that could be any constant. The C1 and the C2 are both parameters. They're both things that no matter what real number they are, we would still have a solution. OK. Well, enough with basic solutions, basic examples that we can look at. Before we can get into all the different types of solution methods that we're going to be going through throughout the semester, we need some definitions. We need some terminology that we can use to talk about differential equations. And the first kind of definition that we want to talk about is an ordinary differential equation. Ooh. 
or ODE for short. Every example that I've put on the board so far has been an ODE. So what is it that makes them an ODE? Well, one of the unfortunate things for this course is that Calc 3 is not a prerequisite for this course. I know most of you have had Calc 3, but some of you I know are taking it right now. In Calc 3, you learn something called a partial derivative. Which is where the other side of this comes from. What we've been talking about is an ordinary differential equation. You can think about that as being as opposed to or versus a partial differential equation. The big thing is, is that for an ODE, your function, your unknown function that you're solving for, Your unknown function only has a single independent variable. The very first differential equation I put up there, I said y is a function of x. x was the independent variable. There was only a single independent variable that we were considering. And again, that carried through all the examples we did. So every one of those was an ODE. If, however, you had your unknown function was a function of multiple variables, then your derivatives in the differential equation have to be partial derivatives rather than normal derivatives. Now, as much as this is the first way that we talk about differential equations, ODEs versus PDEs, in a way, this is the least important designation for us. Because this entire course is going to be ODEs. In general, partial differential equations are, eh, let's just say them are a nightmare. <laughs> it doesn't seem like it compared to a lot of what we do this semester. It doesn't seem like, oh, having multiple variables would not be a big deal. Uh, but let me just say it is. 
When you're solving for an unknown function, having multiple variables in the function just adds so many different possibilities, so many problems that there are very few PDEs that you can ever actually solve. Uh, in general, when you start getting into PDEs, you will start end up having to do a lot of numerical methods to try and figure something out, which is a great course in its own right, but not what we're going to be covering here. <laughs> okay, so that's just the first kind of definition. We can classify differential equations by whether they're ODEs or PDEs. But for the most part, we're going to be talking just about ODEs here. This next terminology thing is incredibly important and also, unfortunately, probably the most confusing thing that we're going to talk about today. And that's because the word linear, so many people, well, one thing, just in general, people have a tough time understanding what linear means in mathematics. And then in differential equations, we use it in the same way, but applying to things that you don't necessarily think. So let's start. Let's not even worry about differential equations for a second. Thinking in terms of algebra, what is a linear equation in algebra? OK. So y equals mx plus b, that is, that is a linear equation. But actually, a linear equation is more general than just that. OK. Um, definitely, every linear function is continuous. That's correct. OK, and this is the problem here. That's just like Caleb said, the equation of a line is a linear equation. But they're not identical. The equation of a line is an example of a linear equation. But a linear equation is more general than that. OK, there we go. OK, I'm going to add a little bit to that, but that's kind of the key thing right there. So in algebra, a linear equation is one where Every variable is to the first power and no term contains more than one variable. So like Caleb said, let's actually put some specific numbers in there. Something like y equals 3x plus 2 is absolutely a linear equation. 
the x and the y are both to the first power. No term has both an x and a y in it. That is a first, or that, that is a linear equation. But like I said to Layla, you can have things that are not the equation of a line that are still a linear equation. Something like 2x plus 5y minus 6z equals 11. That is an example, that is a linear equation, but it is not the equation of a line. Anyone know what that's the equation of? No. I mean, you studied it in vector calculus, but this you do not need vectors for this. It's the equation of a plane, I'll just say that. Uh, they would be squared, but there would be a couple of other additional uh, limitations on it. So, okay. So that's the thing is that we can have any number of variables, but they all have to be the first power and again, no term can have more than one variable. You can't have an xy or an xz or anything like that. Each term has to have just a single variable in it. Now, all this is the same meaning of linear that we use in a differential equation. However, what are we trying to solve for when we solve a differential equation? A function. So in differential equations, it's the functions and their derivatives that these kind of things need to apply to. You can have other stuff in the differential equation that is to powers and can have multiple stuff together. But the function and any of its derivatives all have to be to the first power and no more than one of them in the differential equation. So we could have something like 3x squared y double prime plus 5x y prime minus 7y equals 0. You might look at that and say, oh, wait, that's got a 3x squared. That's not linear but it's the y stuff that we care about. Each function or its derivative is to the first power. There's no term in there that has more than one y kind of thing. So this thing is linear, even linear as a differential equation, even though it doesn't look linear, according to what we just said. So because this is a little bit more confusing than the last one, I'm going to go ahead and write up a few differential equations here. And I'm just making these things up from the top of my head. I'm not claiming these things have any solution whatsoever that we know of. But I just want you to tell me whether what I'm writing is a linear differential equation or not.
Is that linear or not? No. Why not? Yeah, the y double prime is squared. Again, all the functions and its derivatives have to be to the first power. As soon as we see that y double prime squared, it's not linear. What about that one? Is that one linear or not? Yes. Yeah. Again, we got all kinds of weird trig stuff and x squareds. That doesn't matter. The y stuff, each term only has a single y. All the y stuff is to the first power. It's linear. I would have no idea how to solve that, but it's linear. Exactly. Even though the y and the y prime are both to the first power, you can't have both of them in the same term. So no, that's not a linear differential equation. OK, so the first thing I said, we talked about ordinary differential equation versus a partial differential equation. I've talked about linear differential equations versus, what do you think the other thing would be? Non-linear, yeah, not very exciting. One last terminology thing here is that we will often talk about a differential equation in terms of the order of that differential equation. And this is really simple. When we're talking about the order of a differential equation, it's just the highest derivative, highest order of a derivative in that differential equation. So let's go ahead and actually go back and take a look at some of the examples that we've already been through today. The very first one we did was y prime equals y. That has a first derivative as the highest derivative. So that's a first order differential equation. But may as well not stop there. Given all the definitions and terminologies we've talked about so far today, what else can you say about that differential equation? It is linear and it is ordinary. So putting everything together, this would be a first order linear ODE. Another big example we did was the y double prime equals negative y. What can you tell me about that differential equation? It's 
perfect. Yeah, it's second order. It's still linear, and it's still an ODE. So we didn't solve this one, but we had it up on the board. We had something like y double prime times, right? I think it was y prime times y equals zero, something like that. Let's go ahead and make a y double prime. What can you tell me about that one? That would be second order, nonlinear, but still an ODE. In the last five minutes of class here, I want to mention something. So I started by saying that really differential equations is a natural next step from your math education to this point. And just like when you were first learning algebra, you kind of took some baby steps. We're going to have some baby steps involved here too. I want to take a look at a differential equation here. OK, well, first of all, we can may as well go ahead and classify it using all the terms we've done so far. What can you tell me about that differential equation? This is nonlinear, first order, and ordinary differential equation. Yes. OK, now, this is not one where I would expect that you can just look at it and tell me what the answer is. I'm going to claim that y equals 5 tangent 5x is a solution. Where does that come from? Well, we might figure that out like two thirds of the way through the course. <laughs> For right now, I'm just saying, hey, I'm telling you this is a solution. And the thing is, even though you may not know where it comes from, just like in algebra, some of the very first problems you did were to check and make sure that this value for x is a solution, we should be able to do the same kind of thing here. How can I check that this thing, which I pulled out of my magic hat, how can you tell me tell whether that actually works or not? OK, yeah. Just like in algebra, you took your number, plugged it in for x, and made sure it worked, we should be able to do the same kind of thing here. So what is y prime? What is the derivative of that function? OK. 
Okay. So let's see. So we got to take the derivative of this function. What's the derivative of a tangent? Secant squared. There we go. Okay. So we have five secant squared. Keep the inside the same, 5x. But then chain rule kicks in. And so that's not the whole thing. What else do I need in there? Five. So our derivative is 25 secant squared 5x. OK. Now, that's the derivative. But what about the other side of the equation? If I take 25 plus y squared, that will be 25 plus y is 5 tangent 5x. Squaring that. Let's see, to square something multiplied together, you square each part. So 5 squared is 25 tangent squared 5x. And the problem is, at first glance, those two sides don't look the same. So there's two possibilities. Either I lied to you when I told you that this was a solution, or there's something tricky going on here. OK. OK. There is something tricky going on here. I would actually say it is a trig thing rather than a calc 2 thing. It is a trig identity. Let's go ahead and factor a 25 out. And I would take a little bit more time to explain this, but we're out of time. 1 plus tangent squared, that's a trig identity. 1 plus tangent squared is the same thing as secant squared. OK. We are out of time for today, but I think you're in good shape. You've got all the terminology and ideas you need to do the homework for tonight. I'll see you on Wednesday, and then we're actually going to start talking about how do we actually solve these things rather than just kind of looking at them and guessing. OK, uh, everything good, Mohammed? Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Have a good see day. See you on Wednesday. OK, bye-bye. Thank you.